we're asked to find the absolute extrema of f of x comma y equals 2x plus 5y when x is on the closed interval from negative 2 to positive 2 and y is also on the closed interval from negative 2 to positive 2. Looking at our notes below, the first step is to find the critical points that lie in the bounded region and determine the function values at these points. Remember, to find the critical points of a function of two variables, we need to determine where the partial of f with respect to x equals zero and the partial of f with respect to y equals zero and where the partial derivatives do not exist. We begin by determining the partial derivative of f with respect to x and the partial derivative of f with respect to y. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of two x with respect to x is two. The derivative of five y with respect to x is zero. And now we find the partial of f with respect to y. To do this, we differentiate f with respect to y, now treating x as a constant. The derivative of two x with respect to y is zero. The derivative of five y with respect to y is five. And now we set these partial derivatives equal to zero and solve as a system of equations. But notice in this case, both partials are constants, which means they will never equal zero, and they are also always defined, which means f of x comma y has no critical points. So now we move on to step two. Step two, we find the extrema of the function on the boundary using calc one techniques. So our boundaries are y equals negative two, y equals positive two, x equals positive two, and x equals negative two. Let's first consider f of x comma y along the boundary x equals positive two. We're only concerned about this boundary though when y is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two. So when x equals positive two and y is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two, the function f of x comma y is really f of two comma y, which is going to be a function of y. Let's rename this as g of y, which is equal to, now we substitute two for x in the function f, two times two is four, g of y is four plus five y, and now we use calc one techniques to find the absolute extrema of g of y on the closed interval from negative two to positive two. So you first determine the critical points, which is where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. g prime of y is equal to five. Once again, this is a constant, which is never equal to zero and always defined, which means there are no critical points for g of y over this closed interval. But because we're looking for an absolute extrema, we must determine the function values at the endpoints of y equals negative two and y equals positive two. So g of negative two, remember, is the same function value as f of two comma negative two. To find this function value, we substitute negative two for y, which gives us four plus five times negative two, which is equal to negative six. The other end point is when y equals positive two, which would be g of positive two, which is the same function value as f of two comma two, which is equal to four plus five times two, which is equal to 14. So now we've determined the extrema along this boundary line, including the endpoints. Let's go to the next slide and determine the extrema of the function along x equals negative two. Along the boundary x equals negative two, again when y is greater than or equal to negative two, and less than or equal to positive two. Our function f is really f of negative two comma y, which again is a function of y, which we can define as g of y. And again, we're determining the extrema along this boundary here. We've already determined the extrema along this boundary, which again did include the endpoints here and here. If x equals negative two, two times negative two is negative four, g of y is negative four plus five y. Once again, notice how g prime of y is a constant, it's equal to five, which is never equal to zero, and is always defined, and therefore g of y has no critical points when y is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two, 
but we still need to find the function values at the endpoints here and here. So g of negative two is the same function value as f of negative two comma negative two, which is equal to negative four plus five times negative two, which is equal to negative 14. And now we need to find g of two, which is equal to the function value f of negative two comma two, which is negative four plus five times positive two, which is equal to positive six. We still need to find the extrema along the boundary y equals negative two and y equals positive two, but only when x is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two. And we've already determined the function values at the endpoints, and therefore, we only need to find the critical points along the boundary. So now we'll consider the boundary y equals negative two when x is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two. Along this boundary, our function f is really f of x comma negative two, which is a function of x, which we'll call g of x, which is equal to two x plus five times negative two, which is negative 10, g of x is equal to two x minus 10. And now we need to find the critical point of g of x by determining whether the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. Once again, this derivative is a constant, it's equal to two, which is never equal to zero and always defined. There are no critical points along this boundary, and we've already determined the function values at the endpoints. When we found the function values at the endpoints of x equals negative two and x equals positive two. The last boundary is y equals positive two when x is on the closed interval from negative two to positive two. Our function f would be f of x comma two, which is a function of x, which we'll call g of x, which is equal to two x, and then five times two is 10, so plus 10. To find the critical numbers, we find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and see where it's undefined, and it's never equal to zero or undefined, there are no critical points, and again, we've already determined the function values at the endpoints here and here. So for the last step, if the greatest and least values found are the absolute max and absolute min. We found function values of negative six, positive 14, negative 14, and positive six, which means we have an absolute minimum of negative 14 at negative two comma negative two, and we have an absolute maximum of positive 14 at two comma two. This question doesn't ask for the location. It only asks for the absolute extrema, and therefore the absolute minimum is negative 14. But again, if it did ask, this occurs at negative two comma negative two, and the absolute maximum is positive 14 which occurs at two comma two. Before we go, let's look at this graphically. The graph of f of x comma y is this blue plane, which we are considering over this bounded region. Notice how over this region, this is the highest point on the plane, and therefore the z coordinate is positive 14, the absolute maximum of this function over this region, and this occurs when x equals two and y equals two, this other point here is the lowest point on the plane over this bounded region, which means the z coordinate is negative 14, and this occurs when x equals negative two and y equals negative two. So this graph does verify that our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.